Welcome, Gothamites. Hey, we're back, but we're all brand new. Last time was our first video episode. This is our second, but it's a brand new season. And for the first time ever, shows that neither Adam... Hello, Adam. Hello. Nor I have ever seen before. Welcome to season three of Batman the Animated Series, also known as the New Batman Adventures. Episode one, Holiday Nights, and our 80th celebration Ooh. episode of i am the night so adam how are you celebrating our 80th episode today uh i'm just taking in the grandeur of things that are equally new to us because i grew up with the show a lot of us with a lot of people my age but um it, like the faint glimmers of the past have taken a lot of memories of the show away from me so a lot of it's still very fresh and new to me but we get to watch it fresh and new together we've had a like one episode from the original run that you didn't remember but uh it's always a nice surprise to see some new batman media that is a that is a pleasant surprise even to you and new batman characters too and new batman actors one of which we're gonna go really to town with but that'll be coming later in the episode so uh yeah holiday nights what's it about uh honestly this episode was incredibly charming and very well put together it was a sort of a vignette style like collection of short stories of what christmas and new year's is like in gotham it's as you'd expect um peaceable and quiet and nothing happens at all no um yeah. it yeah. starts off with um the ladies shopping spree into actual christmas itself with a, a mall mall heist into uh, new year's being sabotaged by the joker into a nice calm quiet reprieve into the new year absolutely it felt to me almost like and this is obviously just shame what a comic book that i am an anthology christmas comic yeah. like with a four stories for, for, for four of the different members of the bat family and that was really lovely really refreshing different yeah it really was I, I can see a lot of like special issues and like annuals and stuff doing the whole multiple issues multiple stories collected together thing so this was a lot like that and it, ha it was handled very well and well, what do you expect? It was written by Paul Dini, the guru, the creator, and directed by Dan Reba. So we're actually getting a really nice link and follow up with the same director as the final season of episode two. Yeah, I think it's good to see that uh, the same creative team are still putting the same level of care and polish and attention between seasons, even though there's been some uh, very noticeable changes between like season two to season three in terms of like character design and yeah. like overall production. But it's still the same strong level and quality of bat stories. Yes, and a uh, wonderful surprise. We got the old titles. Yes, we did get the old titles. We saw those two goons running away from the explosion. Uh, I feel like, and this is just my own take to take away, because um, for you, for those of you listening and watching to this, uh, it, it doesn't just we're not we're good, but sometimes mistakes happen, and a little bit of editing is needed on every podcast. Mm -hmm. so we don't just off the cuff have our conversation just whole way through sometimes things have to be made so i yeah. will edit those and i'm more than happy to i'm quite good with uh certain software so i know about like audio levels and uh tempo and stuff and it feels like the opening credits have maybe been sped up like 0 0.25 just oh, a wow. little bit just yeah. to try and get through them because they are quite long but there's times when the movement looks faster by comparison the pitch of the music is a little bit higher by comparison so i think it may have been sped up just a little bit but i would need to actually do some side by side chests for that you are so clever i wouldn't even have noticed that amazing wow okay mind blown already a few <laughs> minutes into the episode but let's let's talk about it so let's go into night one december mm -hmm. 22nd uh snowy gotham the gotham hotel and this story is harley and ivy i mean what a way to start a christmas episode the two ladies whose names have become for me at least synonymous with christmas because of their names uh yeah i think that was a, a lovely bit of a, a lovely bit of a note and a nod there but i also think that was um paul dinney having a bit of fun just sort of yeah. saying like okay this is i'm writing the first episode of the new season who's going to be in it the character i created yeah clear. yeah yeah and as everyone well knows uh this is where she started and she's become a very important cornerstone in um, DC Comics, uh, her, her, own, her own live action movies, her own very naughty animated TV series. It's so Harley good. Quinn's a very big deal in like there's DC Zeitgeist and she started here and it's the fine work of uh, Paul Dini just trying to like, put her front and centre. Yep, absolutely. And already, I mean, 
I can't believe there's still people obsessed and fascinated with the Harley Joker romance, and it's already over by yeah. this third season. And I'm sorry, for me, it's Harley and Ivy forever. Um, yeah. Forget that psychotic clown. No, there's uh, there's a lot of people who are obsessed with that romance, but when you um, but the main argument to very easily disarm it is that it is emotionally abusive and like horrible and ugly and wrong. But but you you can't look at the how they were at the beginning of the episode, just sitting around in like baggy, very very minimal clothes in a dingy hotel room that probably doesn't have much heating, Mm -hmm. but they're still very comfortable around each other like that come on they're, they're obviously a thing they're obviously yeah, a couple absolutely and, and fantastic for it but this story so many great moments of the fact that it, it doesn't feel like any of these four stories in one 20 minute episode has been rushed so they can only be like five or six minutes each and they're great i mean the level of characterization this is vintage ivy the kiss the mind control classic moments <laughs> Bruce Wayne's face uh, <laughs> when he's under the mistletoe was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, something he must be getting with a lot, just putting out the Bruce Wayne facade. He's like, yes, I'm an eligible bachelor. Yes, women of society want to marry me for my money, but I don't care. I have a city to protect, but I can't let people know that I have a city to protect. So I'm just going to be an aloof and flighty weirdo. Yay. But he deals with it as best as he can. Most of the time in this episode, maybe like the wrong case comes here and there. And yeah, uh, the, we get an amazing what uh, me as an RPG player calls a shopping montage. Mm-hmm. Of, brilliant. Yeah, of them sort of like blasting through an, a Macy's esque equivalent. <laughs> yeah. And Harley and Ivy make Bruce Wayne pay for it all. It's called Bergduff's department store. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that was a nice touch. Uh, it's just like very clear, like those one of those weird names that like uh, some rich dude puts on a department store in like the 1790s or the re- in, in the revolution. Yeah. But then people forget why it's that, and it's just like, oh, that's a funny name. We'll go in there and get some stuff, and then they do go in there and get some stuff. Uh, I mean, that shopping montage is is priceless. It felt like every teen movie ever mm. of the 80s and 90s mixed in with the Batman characters. I loved it. Satisfying to see characters put it that way. You'd never expect them to be, but it's a nice little uh, subversion, as it were. Yeah. And what did you think of the whole, again, why I love Dini as a writer? Because you can tell that he grew up with these comics. The massive nod to the Silver Age and the Wacko's Toy Store and the giant props and the oh, everything yeah. that goes with it. I, I just yeah. love that stuff. Yeah, because when Bruce Wayne snaps out of it, he slips, slips away and... Um, is able to change back into Batman and chase them down. So that big sort of multi-tiered pyramid thing with the dudes with the hammers and like the ornaments and stuff. Yeah, um, there are big stores in New York-esque uh, cities like Gotham is meant to be based on that could accommodate something like that. But uh, no, that doesn't happen in the real world. It happens in Silver Age comics. And those yes. things are always covered in lasers and razor blades. Oh, yeah. And it's always a... That's the kind of thing you'd expect from a certain kind of villain. Like certain villains are like very straight down the middle and will just like threaten Batman to like oblivion. But characters like Harley and Ivy, they are high fun. So you'd expect those kinds of weird, wacky props with them. Yeah. I mean, what I loved is the fact that they went after Bruce Wayne and hypnotized him, not Batman. But you see Batman come out because his willpower, his strength of character. Hmm. He fights through that mind control oh, yeah. like nobody else, because everyone else who's who's taken over in that episode, even to the point of getting hit by a car and falling over prostate in the middle of the street, doesn't snap them out of it, and he fights back. It's wonderful. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the whole point. The entire time he's, like, just lumpering along, doesn't want to go. But the, the dude who was driving their car was just, like, full-on robot form. So, yeah. Um... It's pretty powerful stuff, and that just shows um, Bruce Wayne's intense character. But it makes sense for the ladies to go after Bruce Wayne because he's oh, like yes. one of the richest dudes in Gotham. The Batman connection is only something that we, the audience and viewers, would know. 
So when he falls down that elevator shaft, we know full well, oh, we can take that fall. He's fine. He was snapping out of it anyway, so he can just sort of recover. But they were like, oh, he's dead. Okay, fine. We got our stuff. Yeah. And um, Stella are acting from still the original Harley, Arlene Sorkin in this. Um, same Poison Ivy, no change. And of course, Kevin Conroy, particularly when he's fighting back the effects, superb mm. work. Yeah, definitely. Um, we'll talk about that. I'll, we'll talk about Kevin's performance a little more once we covered all four stories, I think, because I, I have some things. Speaking of, let's go tonight to December 24th, Mayfield's department store. And this time, ah, Barbara Gordon. Love her, love her, love her. And um, what seems like a Scrooge-esque scenario with Robert Children turns into something very, very different. Yeah, it's not Fagin directing Oliver Twist and his little friends. No, it's um, a little bit more sinister. As soon as the, as soon as she apprehended, tried to apprehend one of those kids, and his whole arm just sort of broke away. I was like, ah, cool, plays back, nice. But I think the thing we have to take away from this episode is the horrifying image of uh, Bullockism. I know what you're going to say. Mall Santa. <laughs> Bullockism Mall Santa. No. And Montoya is his elf. That's... No, Montoya is his elf is fine. That 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 really? can work. But like. Like, yeah, whatever, kid. Merry Christmas. There you go. <laughs> so good. I love that so much. Because he did not want to be there. That was oh, no, 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 the no. clearest thing ever. And again, stellar performances. A new Montoya, though. Um, Leanne Shermer, who takes over to be Montoya for the rest of, of this run. But uh, again, um, as a actual teacher of the Spanish language uh, better for me because again the few lines in Spanish sometimes when I read Spanish dialogue in a comic or I hear Spanish dialogue um, it, it makes me cringe because it's so badly spoken pronounced or translated spot on it was perfect yeah that's Lovely. an important thing to uh, put in a little bit of detail to put in and it's good that it's handled well by a good actress um, yep I have a lot of faith for this character that will eventually become the question Oh, yes. Love her to pieces. And um, I have to talk about the change in Barbara. Um, that black costume yes. is wicked. It's, yes, it's uh... for me still my favourite Batgirl costume, even above most of the comics ones. There's some of the comics ones are like a lot of fun because like, I think ultimately Batman's sidekicks need to have that splash of colour just to contrast Batman. Mm. But... There's ways to do that. And honestly, I think the most important splash of color on Batgirl is the bright red hair. So getting that kind of look down is very unique and very out there. The only notable Batgirl costume I can think of is that one of her in the bathroom at a club taking like a party oh, selfie. Oh, the Burnside costume that she made herself. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Love that. Yeah, but this Absolutely. one just like being like still dark enough to be part of the Bat team, but still has the right pops of color here and there. Really good design. Yeah, lovely. That bright gold bat on her chest, again, which is designed to be a target. It's the most heavily armoured part of the uniform. Brilliant. Yeah, it was, an, it, was a ta it was a call back to Batman's old costume, which is not what he's wearing anymore, but we'll talk about that in a, in a minute. Yeah. And do you not think that for someone who's only just become officially a member of the Bat team, the way she handles Clayface is superb? Well, it's not that she's just that she's... Um... Even though, sure, she's a, the newest member of the Batman team, she's still a very competent crime mm. fighter because she knows things just because she's drip-fed by the commissioner of police. She hears about all kinds of things that these weird, super-powered individuals can get up to. So, yeah, there's a lot of elements to her skill being above average just going into this job. And her genius-level intellect. Exactly. Let's not forget that. Absolutely. So another terrific all action story and um then we go to new year's eve and um <laughs> the scene where the tv's on in the background i don't know if you caught this is an american yeah. football match going yes, I was about to tell you about this. <laughs> the footballer called altieri, altieri uh, after kevin altieri one of the uh, designers and, and directors of the show just i love stuff like that this show's full of stuff like that to be honest yeah. it's so so good and we meet, um, sorry, um, fans of Dick Grayson from He's Nightwing. Sorry, fans of Jason Todd. Sorry for me, he's Red Hood. My favourite Robin, Tim Drake, finally on screen and voiced by a young actor. I didn't Barry. expect this child voice to come out of the guy, but when you see his stature, it makes sense. So that was obviously a, a great surprise for me. Yeah, but very welcome indeed. Um, 
sort of showing that youth is very important for Tim Drake because he was the Robin to start youngest yeah. out of all of the ones that have come along. But that doesn't take away from his level of like until Damien. Damien was younger, yeah, but until yeah, Damien, but, Damien, yeah. yeah, but yeah, but Damien was like born with razor blades instead yeah. of a rattle, so it's fine. Um, yeah, that level of intellect and dry wit is always something that Tim Drake's had. So keep showing that from a younger voice is looking very much a whoa, but also makes sense for the character and is very nice to see. Yeah, and a lovely, again, slight tweak, but very visible on the Robin costume. Really like this one. Yeah, I always associated, I always thought that um, Tim Drake's costume was all of the mostly reds. There wasn't very, very little to any green in it. So, yeah, we're seeing that in this design as well. It's really funny because t- uh, Tim Drake, Dick Grayson's costume in season one and two was actually virtually identical to Tim Drake's original comic costume. All right. um, rather, because remember, because the original Robin costume was the shorts and the little pixie boots and the, oh, the, the collar and the cape thing. Yeah, so um, they updated e- even um, good old Dick Grayson's costume for seasons one and two. So seeing this again, brand new take, which again got adopted by the comics because of this show. <sighs> Just genius design and, and animation. So yeah. talented. Really, really is. And uh, of course, an all new Batman and Robin means they have to face their ultimate villain. Yeah, I think, again, just uh, us being at the start of a new season, uh, we do get to see the best of the best at, at it. And yes, we're getting uh, Mark Hamill's Joker once again. We are delighted and treated to that. Uh, but then again, who else could have done it at this point? Mm-hmm. Has to be Hamill. Hamill and Conroy forever for me. Mm. In everything I do, even when I read a comic to this day, it's their voices. Yeah, definitely true. It's... um. Just like effortless about how great their voices sound to those characters, really. Yeah. Almost. Perfection. Absolute perfection. And so we end with New Year's Day. And this to me, ooh, in terms of emotional content and, and a connection to myself, um, the New Year tradition of Batman and Jim Gordon meeting at a cafe on the stroke of midnight on January the 1st, every year, it's annual tradition. I, I don't know. Am I just a soppy old man? Or did that have an emotional effect on you as well? I thought it was a very poignant and uh, obviously a natural, good, uh, easing attention way to end the episode because we've just gone through three different little stories of high-action superheroics. So getting a calm, quiet, peaceful human moment was yeah. really nice. It's not a situation we ever really see Batman in, hence why he drinks his coffee quickly, vanishes without a trace, but pays pays an exact change. Yeah. So that just shows how consistent that coffee uh, that bar With a 20% is. tip if I know Bra- Batman stroke Bruce Wayne. Uh, hopefully, because like, tipping is a big important thing in American culture. Yeah. Um, th- it's a very... It's a moment we never expect from those kinds of characters, yeah. so just seeing it being all like that is a pleasant surprise and honestly i think we need to see more batman moments yes, like it definitely honestly it humanizes the character doesn't it really does uh this shows them a good job of humanizing him as it is yeah so it's good to see that that's the thing that still goes on but it was a, it was a uh, unexpected but nice it reminded it reminds me of the dynamic between uh dream and hobby leveling yes exactly good one I like that I love it because it shows that they're more than just people who work together to stop crooks. They're friends. Yeah, There's a exactly. bond there. There's a closeness. Jim's got Batman's back, even though he really shouldn't. And this to me was probably one of the most striking of the character design changes because Jim's obviously older. He mm. is clearly mm. a senior man of senior years in this. And, Making that bond tighter between them, because this is now obviously, again, a Batman who has been doing this for a while, because we could never tell. Hmm. It always seemed in the first two seasons that he was still fairly new. Yes. As being Batman. This, in just one episode, I feel like this is now a seasoned crime fighter. And having that slightly older Jim Gordon underlines that, or am I just reading too much into it? No, I can see that. The character design does make him look a lot older. He's like thinner in the jawline yeah. and the jowls and like thinner overall. He's a bit bulkier in the earlier season so yeah some time may have passed between actually obviously an obvious amount of time has passed between season two and season three because uh 
Dick Grayson's nowhere to be seen, but we've got fine alongside Tim Drake. So, yeah, there's obviously been some time some time past, and there's a lot of elements to the way Batman did things in the earlier episodes that s- spoke to him being newer. Yes. And even then, that just sort of humanizes the character because we know him as this like highly trained master of everything one would need to keep the peace on Gotham City. So seeing him like a little bit inexperienced in the earlier episodes is a nice surprise, but a nice bit of realism. Absolutely. So though we've left those episodes long behind, so he's definitely a veteran crime fighter now. And the it's hard to show age on Batman. So they've had to show sort of age the characters around him. And that's just another way to do it. Another thing is that yeah, I just want to reiterate that this is something you just said, that this really does put the impression that they are friends out yeah. there. It really does, because a lot of the tra- the tropes and trends and that people talk about in this series is uh, um, Batman's trying to best his startle senior cop, because <laughs> every time he sort of appears, uh, Jim Gordon's just sort of just sort of like, oh, yeah. Batman, oh, I didn't see you there. Stuff like that. He's just trying to like throw him off because of his ninja skills. He's like, yes, Batman, we know you're a ninja. Stop threat just stop freaking out the old policeman he's going to he's going to pass out one day don't do that in this in this moment where it's like calm and quiet and they're having a conversation and they wish each other the best for the new year to come they feel like they've been doing this for a while yes. both from fighting and this meet up and it's okay because like when gary oldman said in don i rises i in that moment when things are dire i hope you had a friend like i did i don't know if i could believe Christian Bale's Batman and Gary Oldman's Jim Gordon were actually True. that close. True. I don't believe they actually had that friendship. This Batman and this Jim Gordon. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, to a point you raised, which I loved about this story, is I was stunned that Jim's sitting in the cafe and Batman actually just walks in through the door and sits down and has his coffee. And I thought, what the hell am I seeing? But of course, <laughs> he's true to form at the end because Jim looks up. The change, correct change with Tip is there and Batman's gone. Where did he go? Because climbing out of a window or jumping out and shooting his thing when Gordon's not looking for but in a cafe with windows and he's walking through the door, where just I'd also like I'd like to reiterate that he that Batman came in through the back door through the kitchen and like the fire escape and stuff because the owner of the place shooed out those three guys singing carols and locked the front door. So Truly. Absolute magic and vintage, vintage Batman. Superb. Now, um, I'm going to wait to talk about the uh, new acting talent because obviously we still have to talk about the, the classics Jim Gordon, Bruce Batman, um, Harley Ivy are the ones we've known and loved for over three years. Um, but we've got three amazing new talents. We've already mentioned Leanne Shermer. Uh, this is all she did apart from a few video games, uh, Saints Row series and stuff like that. Um, Matthew Valencia again, mainly a child actor, doesn't much since, does some of the older YouTube show here and there. But he did this entire season, uh, The Joker Returns animated movie. Mm. and um, a couple of episodes of Superman the Animated Series, but I want to wait to talk about the new uh, Barbara Gordon till later because um, she needs a spotlight of her own. So wow. let's talk about, like we normally do, our takeaways, good, bad, or ugly, from Holiday Nights. Uh, the fun of the Christmas episode is willing to let me look past the stereotypical gender framing of... Um, Harley and Ivy is just yeah. like, oh, we've got a rich man to do our to do our shop to do our shopping for us. Let's go on a shopping spree. I'm willing to look past that. See, I like take advantage of the rich white guy personally. Oh, for that they angle, take a, yes. they take advantage of so many people in real life. I thought that was great. <laughs> for that angle, yes, I'm willing to forgive it. I was willing. To, I was just a little bit annoyed that they're just framing like two ladies wanting to go on a shopping spree. Yeah. Um. Okay. That that that's that's made me feel better. I'm willing to forgive him for that. But um. I think it's very hard to tell four very different stories all together. Yes, absolutely. But it's it was handled perfectly, and it made me. And it really felt like there was like a day of a week in the life of living in Gotham City because you'll just like be walking down the street and you'll hear about. Oh, did you hear about how Batman tra- apprehended Harley and Ivy in a toy store? Oh, but yeah, okay, that's cool. I'm on my way to uh, to get some last minute shopping. Oh wait, there was some clay children here things are just <laughs> cropping up every like three four days 
Yeah. So there's never a peaceful moment, but there very little... Even at Christmas. Yeah, but very little in the comics actually conveys time that clearly. Like, you get elements of that in Long Halloween, but you're still reading it. You don't yes. get the feel of months over pages. But the feel of days over a few minutes of TV, you really get that. So you're they lucky. Show... You read the Long Halloween in one sitting. I bought it monthly. So for me, it was oh, a wow. long, long Halloween. It was it was 13 months. So yeah, you've, you've had a different reading experience to me with that one. But uh, yeah, getting that element of time, like time progressing quickly, but quick enough that we can relate the changes makes it feel like we could actually get an insight into what living in Gotham's like. Yeah. Do you not feel as well that no other show can cram so much awesomeness into 20, 25 minutes? How do they do that without it feeling rushed? And, and every story felt it had a beginning, a middle and end. It had a strong narrative, strong characters, strong dialogue, strong action. I don't know any show who does that better than this one. I don't know any shows of like high budget, well produced, like... Yeah like prime time live action television that does that i know some stuff that like either waffles to no end or doesn't really have a story to begin with so i don't know how children's quote unquote children's tv can get away with it and still do it and then nothing else since has even come close to being as good yeah it's just the best example of economic storytelling i think i've ever witnessed yeah i can agree with that totally um my one takeaway and um fasten your seatbelt it's a negative Oh, but only just because it's just me being grumpy. Uh, we got Babs, we got Batman, we got Tim. We didn't get Nightwing. Oh, I want Nightwing, but that's just a minor gripe and me being selfish. <laughs> okay, that's just that was you expecting Nightwing to come along. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. From what I've heard, he's not going to be for a few episodes yet, so you need to have a little patience. Uh, no, you have a little patience. So yeah. I'm going to be brutal here. I don't think that quite counts, friend. I think Nightwing's going to get a good spot he's gonna be front and center he's gonna yes. be he's gonna be very important in the episodes to come so i'm sorry i don't think that quite counts as your as your takeaway for the episode and the best thing is because it's the 90s it's mullet nightwing yeah yeah i've seen, <laughs> his, I've seen his picture on some of the art for the dvd um yeah. so yeah i'll be excited wait. to see him i'll be excited to see him but I'm still going to enforce this. I don't think that counts as a proper not, takeaway, friend. So what, not, is your, so what is your? So what was your takeaway for this episode? The same as yours. How well written, acted, and directed this one episode with four separate little stories that felt like four separate little episodes. It felt like the best of the DC anthology comics, and DC hmm. does anthology comics better than anybody else. It felt like a Pride special or one of the. Uh, 100 page uh, anniversary specials that we know and love and we've reviewed ad infinitum over the years so it was just great yeah it, def- it really really was but i think it was made great by the performance of a uh, new actress in a very familiar character so you want to give that spotlight to bob gordon this just made me happy and um this could be um the longest and most unbelievable resume of any actor who's ever appeared on this show. Um, listed in this episode as Tara Charandoff, mm-hmm. her birth name, but who you, I, and millions of fans are now in the world know as A, one of the nicest human beings ever to grace this earth, one of the best people to speak to at a convention, and one of the finest voice actresses, period. Oh, wow. Tara Strong. No way. Yes, is it's the new Babs. And not just no that. Introduction. Yeah, legend. And you know her as she takes over from Arlene Talkman as Harley Quinn mm-hmm. in the video games. And can you even tell the difference? But yeah. Honestly, it's yes. Slightly but little she puts bit, her own yeah. spin on it that yeah. is, makes it exactly. her own. Yeah. But wow. Yeah. I her, her track record is immense. And she's one of those talents. The if you've ever seen her at a convention doing a panel she's or something, listeners, lovely. she's just such a nice lady, but yeah. she switches her voice on a dime oh, all the time. I know, unreal. I know some like voice actors that do work on like um the Chinese um, um Genshin Impact who are contracted only to quote words that their character has said in the yeah. character's voices, they can't just like make things up off on the cuff and the part of the character because then they'd be a bridge contract, but. Tara Strong, she'll just rattle off whatever she wants. Yeah. She'll just um, give a whole conversation about, like, uh, she gave a conversation last I heard. She was talking about some, like, 
boring tax stuff in the voice of one of the My Little Ponies at the last panel oh, I saw her at. Wow. Amazing. Well, hold that thought. I'm just going to... This is scratching the surface, but I wanted to say stuff that would make your eyes light up. Obviously, she's... Untold video games, Final Fantasy, Metal Gear Solid, Kingdom Hearts, Ratchet and Clank, uh, obviously the Arkham series, so many, Unikitty, um, DC Superhero Girls, but this is the bit now which, which just, just blew my mind. As you said, the way she can channel umpteen characters on, on the turn of a dime, this is mm-hmm. things for me. Do you remember the Ted movies with the living teddy bear? Yeah. Baby Ted is Tara Strong. No, really? Yes. Do you remember our other favourite animated DC series? Not Go, but the proper Teen Titan series? Yeah, she was Raven. Yeah. And how different is that to Harley or anyone else? Yeah. Um, and this is the one that really got me because you love this show as a child. Do you remember Ben 10? Yes. Tara was Ben. Yes, she was Ben. She was the lead character of playing. What the hell? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I haven't thought about Ben 10 in a long time. But then again, I think the scrappiness. Yeah. But again, I think the scrappiness of the character was what really sold it. A lot of like mid 2000s cartoon protagonists were like fairly scrappy and just sort of like did the right thing, but didn't enjoy doing the right thing between him and characters like like Blue and the Adventure Time guys. So, yeah, that makes sense. But then a classic performance by a master of the master of the art master says it i mean the word legend gets thrown around a lot um this lady deserves that title oh, yeah. and not just because her work is just phenomenal and speaks for itself but like i said with fans i mean again as soon as i said tara strong your face lit up yeah. like, you've heard her you've experienced the talent and you've seen how amazing she is with the fans even at, from when the convention doors open to when they close, she doesn't falter. Um, one of the nicest human beings I've yeah. ever had the pleasure of meeting and one of the most phenomenal talents in the business, full yeah. stop. Truly iconic. It's like name and talent all over anything involving voice work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a real treasure that I'm very happy to see here in the tail end of the series. So yeah, she's very welcome, did an amazing job as we can expect. Yep, and brilliant, faultless. That's, that's oh, all yeah. I can say. So that was Holiday Nights, Season 3, Episode 1, and our 80th anniversary episode Ooh. of I Am The Night. So until the next one, uh, please tell um, Arkham Knights, Gotham Knights, Christmas Knights, Holiday Nights everywhere where they can hear you and see you. You can hear me at nighttime or daytime because the internet is everywhere. Yes. Uh, for my written work, look to Dark Knight News uh, for Batman-related things. I'm currently reviewing the excellent Batman Joker Deadly Duo series as well as the ongoing run of Catwoman, both an excellent comic spot right now. But for my one true love, PC and tabletop gaming, look to our pride and joy, fantasticuniverses.com, where I put my own two cents in on collectible card games, gacha games, and whatever else I'm playing at the moment. Look to Storytellers Forge, where my blog posts on the Storytellers Forge will help you level up your TTRPG experience. And listen to my own dulcet tones on the Fantastic Universes podcast, where a friend and I talk about PC, console, tabletop, and everything in between in the world of gaming. And once things are sorted here in my own castle, look to twitch.tv forward slash is it tinkerer for my card game streams, where I'll be streaming Magic the Gathering Arena, Legends of Rune Terror, Marvel Snap, and whatever card related game thing I fancy playing. Talk to me on Twitter at is it tinkerer and follow all of my social means and more at linktree.com forward slash is it tinkerer marvelous and do check that stuff out if you're into gaming of any kind you will love the content adam is producing as for myself you can catch me on this show on the regular dc comics news podcast on every podcast catcher apple podcasts google stitcher spotify wherever you get your shows we are there like us rate us review us tell us what we love and uh, tell us anything we might be doing wrong which hopefully isn't too much um Catch us there. Catch us on all social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube. Uh, Yes, you can actually see our heroic faces as well as hear our dulcet tones all over Tinternets. Um, At DC Comics News on every social platform. For Dark Knight News on Twitter, it's at DKNews.com. But DK, DC, uh, DarkNightNews.com on the internet. For me, search Steve J. Ray or 
Fantastic Universes to read my work across Fantastic Universes, DC Comics News, Dark Knight News, and all the other cool places. And talk to me at L Stevo, E L underscore S T E E V O. And I will always, always reply, especially if you say nice things about good nerdy stuff. But until you do, I am the knight. We are the knight. And this has been the I Am the Knight podcast. Thank you for listening. And until next time, read more comics and watch more Batman. Batman.